Hello, I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and welcome to Surviving Bad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. Today, we have a conversation with marijuana legalization advocate, Carl Olson. There used to be two sides to the marijuana debate centered on the idea of legalization. But today, even longtime opponents like Carl and I are working together to make some sense of an issue complicated by big business interests and a confusing legal landscape. So let's welcome Carl Olson to the show. Carl, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, in uh, keeping with your program, I used alcohol when I was a kid, and then I went to marijuana, and then I went to psychedelics uh, in pills, though, you know, LSD and mescaline. But um, you don't, you can't recognize something with a, in a pill. Like, you don't know what's really in there. And then I progressed from there to methamphetamine and barbiturates and uh and then I got so strung out that I had to stop because I thought I, I was facing a life or death decision <laughs> to either continue or die, or well, continue and die or, or stop. So I decided to stop everything except for marijuana and continued to use marijuana for another 20 years after that on a daily basis. And um, I quit because I wanted to become a legal advocate. Um, I love marijuana. I would use it right now if it was legal and didn't. Uh, caused me a legal hassle to be involved with it. So um, that's my background. And then, and of course, and that's my goal today. I love marijuana, but I don't love what I see happening with it. My concept of legalization was more like repeal. <laughs> it wasn't like big business take over and run it like tobacco or alcohol. I thought, no, this is not like tobacco and alcohol. Those are evil. This is a good thing. Why would we treat it like terrible, horrible things? So I'm against what I see happening. And Iowa has authorized criminal organizations to run this program. Everyone that's involved in it is violating federal drug law. And there is a registration waiver that we could apply for. And the state agrees with me that we should do that. And they're stalling and won't do it. They agreed with me in 2020, September 4th, 2020, they agreed with me in writing. I have this in writing from the Department of Health. You know, it's Health and Human Services now, but, and uh, they say the governor won't, won't move forward with it. Um, and, and I can understand that because the governor, doesn't have the heart. She's not into this. She knows that making an application for a waiver for Iowa when there's 47 other states that could do the same thing and haven't done it. Um, she knows there must be something difficult about it. There's something that just tells her that this isn't going to be an easy thing to do. And so she doesn't, I mean, I'm just guessing now, but I think that's a pretty good guess that she looks at this as going, it couldn't be that easy. There must be something to it. And so I have a bill pending in the Iowa Senate right now in the Senate Judiciary Committee to create a legal committee to recommend to help her uh, understand the issue. And so that's what I'm working on now, Senate File 69. Oh, what is the, what is the core of Senate File 69? Uh, that it would create a legal committee to um, implement the agreement the department made in 2020 to file for federal exemption for our state program and uh, a committee of legal experts because nobody can understand me that doesn't know at least how to learn law. Um, I'm not saying there's any lawyers that know the drug law like as well as I do, but they could absorb it quickly if they have a legal background. Yeah, I know we've met many a time. We've spoke at forums and, and you know, early on, it was really simple. You were for legalization and I was against legalization. But but even early on, we met and we were really, I know you agreed that we really needed to keep this out of the hands of children, that we were talking about constitutional rights for adults, not proliferation amongst the youth and things like that. And so, well, in, in context, well, the thing is, is that they're selling highly concentrated products in unrecognizable forms. It was never my thought that an adult would get near that stuff, let alone a child. I mean, this is no what, what we have today is not marijuana. It's some kind of crazy pharmaceutical hybrid type thing where we're trying to I mean, you know, like, what do you know what's in a pill, you know? You know, and I agree with you. This is what's brought us together. We, we, it's, you know, it's really become 
industry producing chemicals in laboratories and selling things that we don't have any idea what they are and using the, it's, it's almost like the old red herring concept where just call it marijuana, but put whatever the heck you want in it and, and, and yeah. get away with it. Now, they do test the Iowa products pretty well. So, but the thing is, is that the program continues to expand. And you know that we're going to eventually evolve into adult use, recreational use. And are they going to continue to be able to maintain the tight control that they're maintaining today as that moves forward? I think we need to get the DEA involved in it and register these manufacturers, distributors, and dispensers. And then that would set the precedent where all the states would realize, hey, this doesn't have to be a federal crime. You can get a waiver from the DEA for good cause. And then the DEA would be able to monitor the um, you know, records, accounting. They would be able to monitor inventories and, and uh, you know, make sure that the state has a tight control on it to We're maintain the exemption. Break. Yeah, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back and talk with Carl Olson about what we can do in terms of understanding what's really happening in Iowa and how does it affect Iowa from a federal point of view. See you all after the break. You don't want to miss this. Malware and bots and worms. Oh, my. The wild, wild web can be a scary and complex place. And as our digital world expands, so too are the threats. Watch out. Trojan horse. That's why at Mediacom, we take security very seriously and monitor our networks around the clock to stop threats before they can affect you. Not today, Rootkit. Not all Internet is created equal. We build ours to keep you connected and protected. I could go back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change, I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and we're talking with marijuana legalization advocate, Carl Olson. Carl, we have a wonderful scenario in Iowa with a program that has an advisory board, which you and I have both spoken there. We've seen each other there, but these are some pretty special people, actually doctors helping craft this law, but yet they're not always given the power that they should have. What are your thoughts about them? Yeah, I've attended every single one of their meetings from the first organizational meeting. To, I've never missed a meeting. I'm the first one there to arrive, first, last to leave. I've developed a per personal relationship with several of these doctors. Um, they are just spectacular. And I don't know if any other state has a board quite like this one. Um, these guys don't get distracted by having members, public members or members of law enforcement. I mean, that. Captain McKelvey chairs the committee, but he's a, he's a police officer, but he just chairs it. And so, you know, it's good for him to be there so he can hear what's going on and relay that to the state police or the Iowa police officers. But basically, it's just medical professionals and they understand red tape. They all have to have dealings with the FDA and the DEA. So when I went to them and explained this federal exemption argument with the DEA, they were able to see that I wasn't just blowing smoke. It was a real deal. And so they supported it unanimously several times. But um, because we're giving these products to people with serious medical conditions, it only makes sense to have some doctors supervise this because it's not medicine. It doesn't have any proven medical use. And so they're there to make sure that it stays safe. And they have, you know, they can read lots of studies that have been done and see what were the symptoms and side effects of giving this stuff to people. And so they're fairly comfortable with a certain amount that people can tolerate. And so they are doing a really good job of protecting the health of people without being, um, saying that this is actually medicine, you know, it's more based on safety. 
and our program has had no diversion and no adverse health effects, no adverse health events. So that proves that at least we're not causing harm. And, you know, that's a big thing in the medical profession, do no harm, you know. So um, so I'm, I'm really pleased with them. And uh, they've had my back and they've done some things like call out the legislature for disguising this program as a CBD program, saying it's not CBD, it's got THC and it's a medical cannabis program. It's not limited to CBD. Uh, be honest and rename the program to what it really is, and the legislature won't do that. Now, when the legislature wants to um, increase the THC limits and the governor throws a fit about that, the board is there to say, oh, here's what the reasonable limit should be. And then the legislature listens to them because the governor is mad and they don't want the governor mad. So they go to the board to get some moral support and the board gives it to them and then they go oh we followed the board you know when it's convenient but when it's not convenient no they don't listen to them that's a shame you know we we also noticed we've had some people in the communities get a little angry because they see a lot of ads they see targeting children we've had yeah. some neonatal units say that we have dispensaries calling people patients and yep. you know when they're not credibly doctors and they're also recommending the uh, THC products for women that are pregnant for nausea and morning sickness. And we have, you know, doctors are up in arms. They're like, this is not, I mean, you do not want to use this stuff if you're pregnant. No oh, more yeah. do you want to use tobacco and alcohol. And yet it's this sort of quote unquote legal industry in Iowa um, that, that is well, going down these roads. These industries are federal continuing criminal enterprises. And they brought in on the application for the license, you have to say you're willing to violate federal drug law or you don't get the license. Have you ever seen a job application like that before? That's the most <laughs> crazy thing. And so they brought in these people from Colorado and Washington for their experience in the adult use market. And then they want to know why they're promoting marijuana as a lifestyle choice and why they're abusing the THC limits and why they're advising people and why they're trying to set up a cannabis lounge at the 8035 festival. It's like, are you kidding me? They were hired for that. That's, they had to have that. That was a requirement that they have that quality just to get the job. It's like, this is, we're being misled here. The legislature knew this and they're the fall guy. They're just like the rest of us. The, the manufacturers of the patsies, they're fall guys, they're being used. It's all being done because the legislators wanna look like they're doing something for marijuana because the public wants that. So it's all crooked. Yeah, we're gonna take a short break on that note and come back to the continued discussion about sort of the complicated issues surrounding the marijuana industry and some of the questions that every Iowan needs to ask themselves and other people that are central to the issue. See you all after the break. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? The fact is, we use the internet for almost everything we do. Smart Cage, Feed Beaker. So when the internet doesn't work the way it should, you don't work the way you should. Kevin! That's why more homes and businesses rely on Mediacom. Our fiber-powered network delivers 99.99% reliability. And with 650,000 miles of fiber, we have more paths of connection and more ways to avoid outages. Not all internet is created equal. We build ours for you to rely on.
Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're with marijuana legalization advocate Carl Olson, who's made a career out of understanding marijuana policy and legislation. And yet, Carl, for the common man, for the average person, the arguments around marijuana legislation are so complex, so legislative, so legalese, full of legalese, that it seems lost. It's still like we're now stripping back to, well, just give us anything. What are your thoughts on where this has gone and how can we fix this? Well, yeah, we all complain. Well, I don't know, we all, but I complained about prohibition. And so, you know, when people were faced with the thing, well, how are we going to get rid of prohibition? And they thought, money. If we get big business into this, they'll do it. And it won't be nice. It won't be pretty, but it won't be prohibition, at least not like we knew it. So that's how they've been able to make the whole country swallow this crap, because we went from nothing to something. And so a lot of people say, well, good. And is this a plague? Sure. Moses, let my people go. Pharaoh, no. Okay, bring on a locust. <laughs> Eat all your fields. So you plague. don't think what they've done has really been what marijuana advocates have really wanted from the get go? No, but marijuana advocates realized they weren't going to get what they wanted, so they settled for this BS. Can I say that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Children's show. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, that, that, in my perfect world, it would just be an herb that's returned to your garden and your, you know, your vegetables, and you could just grow it for whatever you needed it for. You wouldn't, and you wouldn't. It would be. I wouldn't want to see it commercialized at all. I would want to see it kept somewhat private now what about this potency thing it seems almost insane that they're pushing to 80 90 100 percent thc which is so powerfully addictive and that's the whole thing the reason why we couldn't have marijuana is because it had thc in it but now you can go to one of the dispensaries and buy a vape pen with 80 percent thc in it 1.5 percent cbd and the terpene terpene terpenes and flavonoids and supposedly all natural but 80 percent thc like that was the reason why we couldn't have marijuana well there's another reason they don't want you to smoke it obviously but you can't vape it i smoked marijuana for over 20 years and i'm like sitting here 72 or i'm 71 years old and like you can't tell me that that did anything bad to me in any way i won't believe it well, I, we do know that, you know, it's comparative. It's just like the smoking uh, industry, tobacco industry is used to have these uh, comments they made. Well, American Indians have been smoking tobacco forever. Um, yeah, and it, not laced with 500 them. chemical additives, though. <laughs> well, and also it was a ritual. They didn't smoke yeah. 24 pipes a day. You know, oh. this was something ritualized. Well, it was a ritual used for me on too, special but I did smoke 24 pipes a day. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, you know, the, you're you're marijuana user of old wasn't huffing on a, on a joint all day long that was a small minority but now with vaping well i was in that people... small minority well there you go <laughs> what i'm saying is i used a lot of marijuana and when you tell me there's something wrong with marijuana i just can't believe it my own eyes my own witness my own experience it's just i don't know who that you go to to find out that marijuana is dangerous, but I'd like to know if that is something else wrong with that person because it didn't happen to me. Well, the question might be potency. The whole well, potency, whether it comes it to be. LSD, whether it comes to alcohol, whether it comes to ca to uh, yeah, to I was tobacco more into and it nicotine. For flavor. Yeah, I was more into it for flavor. A potency was nice, but not. I mean, you know that it had some potency. Great, wonderful. But it also had to have a nice flavor and a nice smell. And so I just enjoyed the whole thing, cooking the marijuana. But I'm, I didn't, um, I mean, certainly if I ran into something strong, like some Thai sticks or um, Hawa ha Maui Wowie or whatever. Or Acapulco Gold. Or yeah, that thing would set me back. You know? Red, yeah. Yeah, so I'd be sitting down in a chair, and like maybe the joint would just sit in the ashtray and, and go out, you know? I mean, so. It, it yeah i mean you know, the we whole look thing at is that. That if you're a constant marijuana smoker you can't be dysfunctional or you won't eat so you're going to titrate you're going to moderate wherever you have to but i still smoked all day long every day and smoked a lot of marijuana but no i didn't i could not be inoperable i had to be be able to function so whatever it took to moderate that 
I was able to figure that out and learn that behavior, kind of like driving a car. You wouldn't let a two-year-old drive a car, you know. Yep. Yeah, and we do yeah. know that potency has a large effect on that. And historically, marijuana from our, when we were young, was nowhere near the potency that they're selling today. And that, that just goes be. to prove, just like alcohol or tobacco, it's addiction they're selling. They don't care yeah. what the substance is. Yeah, no, it's disgusting. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a short break. And then afterwards, let's talk about some final comments, insights, and inspiration, things you want to share with people you've learned on this journey and what people need to know themselves when they talk to their legislators or their friends about where marijuana needs to go in Iowa. See you all after the break. You don't want to miss this. Watching MC22 is now easier than ever before. All Mediacom customers can watch local programming online anytime. Go to mc22.net, click Watch MC22, and log in with your Mediacom account. Not a Mediacom cable subscriber? Mediacom internet or phone subscribers can watch too. Your local programming leader, MC22, online at mc22.net slash watch. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back. Today on Surviving Bad, we're talking about the debate about marijuana and legalization, something that has become very complicated in Iowa. Let's see what insights our guest, Carl Olson, an expert, has to share. Carl, what do people need to take away from this conversation today? Well, what we need to take away from this conversation is that this is not going away. We need to fix it. And the only way to fix it is to bring it within federal drug law to make it legal. There's a way to do that. The attorney general can waive the registration requirements and register manufacturers, distributors, and dispensers for good cause. Well, the good cause is the state law. The legislature wouldn't enact the law if it wasn't for good cause. Congress has been suspending the enforcement criminal enforcement against these continuing criminal enterprises for the last nine years in a row, so they must think there's good cause. These two bodies created the drug law, so if they say this is a good cause, they should know they created it. And then you've got the Secretary of Health and Human Services looking at this, and we may get ready for a shocker this year, and he may say that it needs to be removed from the classification it's in and lowered to a low, less restrictive schedule. So the state needs to stop thinking that crime is the way to solve a problem. We're sending a signal to underprivileged youth that if you join a gang and get involved in criminal activity, that's the way to succeed because that's what we're doing with marijuana. And it's been done in 47 states that way, same way. So you and I have signal. We're sending a message that government's broken and can't be fixed. We don't know what to do. I know what to do. And Senator Zahn introduced my bill to promote this federal exemption by creating a legal committee to study it. And so we need to do that in January. That bill got stalled last January because the scandal erupted in the Des Moines Register over the manufacturer promoting marijuana as a lifestyle, abusing the THC waivers. That hit the newspaper the day before my hearing on my bill, and Senator Zahn just pulled it and didn't vote on it. So that's pending and will come up next year. And then the Democrats added the entire set of recommendations from the board to their legalization bill in the house house file 242 i think it is or maybe it's how do you feel about bill. that the, the some a company called med farm under the auspices of a kind of a dial program that's really not all of a sudden changing its name to bud and mary's and starting to promote more recreational type uses we hired them because they had expertise in the adult market in Colorado, and we think they're not going to behave that way. That's so stupid. They were hired specifically to act this way, and for some reason, 
the legislature thinks it's great that it explodes in a scandal in the Des Moines Register, and nobody says a word about this whole thing being an illegal drug racketeering scheme. Hmm. It's like, whoa, are we being deceived? It's just terrible. So now another thing I'd ask you is how do you feel about notwithstanding anything that we do everything possible to limit access to kids under 21? Sure. Yeah, especially from dispensary marijuana, because that isn't even marijuana in Iowa. That's high potency extracts. Yeah, this, the marijuana in Iowa is not coming from plants, is it? No, it does come from plants, but it doesn't get out of the manufacturers. Um, the, it, it can't be sold in, the, in raw form. So the manufacturer is cultivating cannabis downtown in Des Moines. And I think there's another one in Iowa City. I can't remember. There's been a lot of disruption with that one. Um, changing hands and stuff, but Med Farm has been, you know, the, they're the they're the uh, the face of the whole thing. So anyway, they grow the marijuana, they make the extracts, they get them approved by the Department of Health. So this 80% THC vape pen has been approved by the Iowa Department of Public Health as an acceptable product in Iowa. Um, yeah, I don't know because this is unproven science. It's all experimental. Would you? And, and certainly, well, anyway, the, the kids with seizure disorder is why we have this program in the first place. But they don't get the high THC product. They're getting a mix, probably lower THC. I'm not sure. I've heard some of these kids take the 50-50 blend. Um, so it is given to children, but not willy-nilly. And these are children that have failed to respond to conventional treatments, too. So there's a lot of thinking that goes into this and, and how this is done, but no, it just, sort of all began that way to look at helping these yeah. kids. And before you know it, it it's gotten to the place where even you admittedly wouldn't use the products they're selling. No, because I don't need them. I don't have a, hopefully I don't get in a condition where I need those. <laughs> well, you know, I'm glad that you could come on the show and speak out today. I know that we're all working towards clarity and understanding and a good scientific basis for these programs so that everybody can understand what's going on and have the freedom to exercise their rights as Americans and Iowans. So thank you for joining us today. And thank you all for watching. Check out our website, ahealthyiowa.org, and keep your eye on Mediacom MC22 for our next episode of Surviving Bad, where we explore stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. On Mediacom MC22, your local programming leader.